Most Filipinos are engaged in different types of investment. Some investments that are less explored are stocks and bonds. So in this lesson, you will learn the basic concepts of financial management of stocks and bonds. At the end of this video, you are expected to define stocks and bonds and solve problems involving stocks and bonds. In order for some corporations to do an expansion or pay debts, they need money to do such. And one way of raising money to finance such is to sell part of their company to investing people or institution. Or they can do it by issuing stocks or bonds. Stock represents ownership of the company. So if you buy stocks of a certain company, you become one of the many owners of that company. And being one of the owners, you may get a part of the earnings of that company. You can get your earnings through their profit or you can sell your stocks. The more stocks one owns, the more an individual owns in a corporation or company. So these are the ways you can earn money through investing in stocks. However, not all individuals earn money through investing. Some investors lose money and so we should know all the risks before we try to invest our money in a company. So better research first before investing your money into that certain company. Those who own shares of corporation stock are known as the stockholders. And the stock is represented by a stock certificate. This is how the certificate looks like. Let's define the following terms in relation to stocks. So one way to make money in the market is through dividends or profit mula sa kinita ng company. And that depends kung ilan yung porsyento na maibibigay sa'yo o ilan yung stocks mo. So meaning, class, the more stocks you have, the more the dividend. Another way also to make money is you can use the buy low, sell high strategy where you buy stocks at a low price and sell them at a higher price. Okay? And then the dividend per share, that is the ratio of the dividends to the number of shares. Stock market naman, so in the Philippines, the stock market is governed by the Philippine Stocks Exchange. So this is the place where stocks can be bought or sold. Another is the market value. So yung presyo ng bawat stocks ay nakadepende yan sa market value kung magkano. Okay? Then, stock yield ratio, that is the ratio of the annual dividend per share and the market value per share. And it is also called the current stock yield. And last, the par value. This is the per share amount as stated on the company certificate. So, there is really fixed percentage that you can get. Unlike the market value na nakadepende siya, di ba? So, it is determined by the company and remains stable over time. So, five friends decided to establish a business. They decided to contribute 100,000 pesos each in order to put up the business. So, the question is, how much ownership does each individual have? So, ownership may be computed by looking at the shares alone. So, since each friend gave the same amount, which is 100,000, so, meaning, they have equal ownership. So, each friend would then own 20% of the business. So, next, what would be the cost of shares if they decided to split up the business to 10,000 shares? So, since each friend also contribute 100,000 pesos to put up this business, so since lima sila, the total value of the business is 500,000 pesos. What would be the cost of shares if they decided to split up the business to 10,000 shares? So this value of the business will then be divided by 10,000 shares. And it will give us an answer of 50 pesos per share. Next example. A certain corporation declared to give 50 million pesos dividend wow, to the common stockholders. So if there are 800,000 shares, how much is the dividend per share? Okay, so 
let's have the given information. So the total dividend in this corporation is 50 million pesos, wherein they, ito yung kita ng kumpanya. And the total shares is 800,000 pesos. So let's find the dividend per share. And it is calculated with this formula. So that is just the ratio of the total dividend and the total shares. So let's just divide. And it will give us an answer of 62.5. Therefore, the dividend per share is 62 pesos and 50 centavos. Okay, so if I have um, lots of shares or stocks in this corporation, therefore, I will also have lots of dividends. Diba? So, mas maraming stocks, mas maraming dividend ka na matatanggap. Okay, let's proceed to our third example. So, Corporation A with a current market value of 30 pesos so, meaning, ito yung price of a stock at which it can be sold. No? It gave a dividend of 3 pesos and 50 centavos per share for its common stock. While for Corporation B, they have a current market value of 52 pesos, which gave a dividend of 8 pesos per share. So, assuming all other things remain constant, in which corporation should you invest? Is it on Corporation A or Corporation B? So, the formula in finding the stock yield ratio is equal to dividend per share over the current market value. So, since so for Corporation A, we have 3.50 divided by 30. So, the stock yield ratio is 11.67%. How about for Corporation B? So, for, for Corporation B, we have... 15.38%. So, based on this computation, I would rather invest my money to Corporation B since it has a higher stock yield ratio, meaning each peso would earn more. So, a bond is a debt financing instrument. This is an interest-bearing security which promises to pay an amount of money on certain maturity value as stated in the bond certificate. Okay. So, for example, the government allocate a budget about 100 billion to Department of Health, especially now that we are fighting against COVID. So, it doesn't mean that if they propose this certain amount of money, they really have that money. Hindi yun. So, it means na magahanap ng bonds or source yung government na pagkakautangan para mabigyan ng 100 billion yung Department of Health. Kaya nagkakaroon ng loans ang ating government. Okay? So kung ikaw, when you want to buy bonds from the government, you become a lender to the government. And the government would now be obliged to pay you back its loan. And of course, if magpapautang ka ng pera, there should be an interest on it. So, dun din kikita yung mga investors or yung nagpapa hiram ng pera sa ating government. So, let's define the terms in relation to bonds. So, we have coupon. This is the periodic interest payment that the bondholder receives during the time between purchase date and the maturity date. We also have the coupon rate. This is the rate per coupon payment period denoted by R. Then the price of the bond at purchase time, which is denoted by P, and the par value or the face value, which is the amount payable on the maturity date, denoted by F. So let's try to solve examples in relation to bonds. What is the semi-annual coupon for a bond with a face value of 500,000 pesos that pays 9% payable semi-annually for its coupons? So let's identify the given. So we have our face value of 500,000 pesos and a coupon rate which is 10%. So we are looking for the amount of the semi-annual coupon. And to solve that one, it is just like solving for the interest. That is, we multiply the face value by the coupon rate. And the amount of coupon per bond is 45,000 pesos for annual coupon but since we are looking for the semi-annual coupon so we just have to divide it by 2 and we get an answer of 22,500 so that's it for today I hope you've learned something on the discussion of stocks and bonds 
Thank you for watching and see you in our next video.